So with no further delay, allow me to open up this afternoon's discourse. Please join me in welcoming Glenn Greenwald and Professor Neil Chomsky. Of the law, that equality under the law is how we determine if we're perfecting the union. 
And there's a real value in affirming principles even if they're not perfectly applied. And what I think is radically different about today um, is not that the rule of law suddenly is, is not being applied faithfully because that's always been true. What's different about today radically is that we no longer even bother to affirm that principle. We pay lip service to the phrase the rule of law, but there's, in terms of the substance of what it requires, you can often, and I would say more often than not, in leading opinion-making elite circles, find an express renouncement or repudiation of that principle. So you begin with the Ford pardon of Nixon, continuing through the shielding of Iran-Contra criminals, into the Obama administration's decision to shield all Bush crimes of torture and illegal warrant disease dropping, um, obstruction of justice, the aggressive attack on Iraq, um, the decision now not to prosecute Wall Street criminals for precipitating the 2008 crisis with systematic financial fraud. All of these acts entail very aggressive and explicit arguments that the most powerful political and financial elites in our society should not be and are not subject to the rule of law because it's too disruptive, it's too divisive, it's more important that we look forward, that we find ways to avoid repeating the problem. And so you really see constant arguments. Um, and you did, for example, during the debate over whether or not the telecom industry should be retroactively immunized for its role in the illegal eavesdropping program, that the rule of law is really not that important of a value any longer. Jerry Ford, when he addressed the nation and tried to convince it to accept the pardon, said, of course I believe in the rule of law, the idea that the law is no respecter of persons. But, and this was the amendment that was concocted for that episode, the law is also a respecter of the reality. Meaning that if it's too direct, dis disruptive or divisive, that it's actually in our common good, not the elite criminals, but in our common good, to exempt the most powerful from the consequences of their criminal acts. And that has really become the template used in each of these instances. And that, I think, radically um, is different than how things were in the past. Uh, yeah, the other point I want to make, um, just to begin, and then I'll turn the floor over to Professor Chomsky, um, is that the other difference is that if we had a society that just decided that we were going to be very lenient and forgiving and merciful when people committed crimes, as I just described with you for at least, you can have debates about whether that was an advisable policy or approach to criminality about whether or not that would be produce good results or not, but if it were a crime of applied across the board, at the very least, it wouldn't implicate rule of law issues. There are countries that take very lenient approaches to criminal justice, um, and if we were a country that applied that same leniency to um, ordinary Americans as we apply to the least, then there wouldn't be an issue with the rule of law. So, for example, if you went and broke into someone's house and, 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 and bashed the owner in the head with, with a baseball bat and stole their valuable belongings and a week later or two months later got caught by the police and you said, look, officer, you got me, I did what you think I did, but isn't it more important that we could look to the future? Why the why focus on the past? If that were something that worked for you or for people who sold drugs on street corners and the like, then um, there wouldn't be a rule of law issue. But the fact that that applies only to um, to political and financial elites, not to ordinary Americans, is the reason why there is a rule of law problem. At the very same time that we created this template of elite immunity, we, over the past four decades, we have, in the name of law and order and tough on crime, built the world's largest and most sprawling prison state, one of its harshest and most merciless systems of punishment for ordinary Americans. And the irony that Richard Nixon um, was the one who received this pardon when in the 1960s he rejuvenated his political career by becoming the law and order candidate, following picking up the mantle of Barry Goldwater, running against the disruption and the arrest of the 1960s, demanding harsh sentences, lesser parole, lesser opportunity for release from prison. Um, the drug war was really accelerated first under him. The fact that he built his political career based on this harsh law and order mentality and then suddenly when he got caught committing crimes was completely shielded from legal consequence is really the personification of this two-tier justice system that I'm writing about. And then of course the war on terror has brought all new tiers of justice where uh, people accused of terrorism, just accused, um, can have every right deprived from them, including the right to life, without any sort of legal rights or legal process of any kind. It's really a new class, a class where there's not even a pretense of due process. It's a persona non grata, a sub-person 
um, class where the government can do anything without any legal constraints at all. And it's this contrast between the shielding and immunity that we've invested in the elite class and more accurately that they've vested in themselves versus the extraordinarily unprecedentedly harsh and merciless punishment system imposed on everyone else that is the real menace to the rule of law and that I think is the most responsible factor for uh, the loss of faith in our political institutions and, and the widespread accurate belief that you see motivating the Occupy movement and other widespread citizen rage that our political institutions have lost all remnants of legitimacy and can no longer be used to effectuate change. So I think it's one of the most menacing problems and also one of the most consequential. So.